tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Um, again, I am Marielle from Simply Finance. So I'm the founder of Simply Finance and I'm also a registered financial planner. So by profession, I'm a registered financial planner and I created Simply Finance um, as a platform to reach more millennials and more Filipinos. Um, as for my studies, in 2013, I graduated from Ateneo de Manila and then my course was not finance related at all. It was interdisciplinary studies and I guess through my experiences in college up to, to now, you know, that's what really led me to this profession. It wasn't like a dream profession of mine. Parang no one in my industry, hindi naman nila to dream talaga. Parang wala akong kailangan na grew up wanting to be one. But I ended up here lang due to many life experiences. Ayun. <laughs> you decide to start Simply Finance. Okay. So I've been in this industry for basta since 2015. But for the longest time, like my manager then kept saying, you should have an online presence, you know, you should be able to reach more people. And parang for the longest time, sobra akong against it. Na parang ayoko, I don't wanna... I don't want to put myself out there, blah, blah, blah. But it kept tugging at me. And then finally, last year, I decided mm -hmm. now, you know what? I'm, I'm going to like create a platform. I'm going to create a page just so that mm -hmm. I could reach more, like younger people especially. And parang even I wanted a platform that even if they don't avail of my services, may matututunan na sila sa platform ko na by its size that they can actually do. So yun, it was simmering for the longest time last year. And then, yun, finally, I was gonna launch in March. Pero, uh, like a pandemic big last. So, pinos ko pa nga siya. I was like, wait, paano yun? Like, paano yun? Puro online. And I, was, I really planned it na parang in person, ganyan. But yun, after one month of being locked down, my team, my social media team was like, no, let's launch na. Sayang naman all our, all our content. Ganyan. So, I was like, okay, bahala na, Lord. And then, when I launched, <laughs> Grab it! No, parang ganda nung nangyari. Parang pati yung Simply Finance TV, I didn't plan doing that at all. Pero during the pandemic, okay. dami mo kasing time to think. And then I was like, you know what? Go ka na videos. Yun. So, um, it's been a fun journey so far. And I'm really meeting so many young new young people. And yeah, it's been a fun, yeah. fun ride so far. Simply <laughs> Finance, we really offer... um. Our main service is one on one financial coaching and planning sessions with clients. So, mm -hmm. if you want to learn more about that, you can just mm -hmm. book a free discovery call. It's on the link in our IG page, Simply Finance mm -hmm. PH, to know more. But I also mm -hmm. do cater to, let's say, corporate clients. Now, we do workshops. I also help with mga employee benefits for companies. Pero for the mga one on one talaga, it's really one on one coaching talaga and planning. Like, I help my clients create. Para a roadmap talaga sa finances nila, sa budgeting, mga investing, ganyan. Okay, okay. So, um, advocacy or kahit even si Simply Finance, may, may advocacy ba that you really stand for? Okay, so we have three parang values or advocacies. It's really support, simplify, and empower. Um, support, I'm really big on this. Um, I really extend this to my clients because I really believe that if I didn't have the support I had for my financial planner and all the mentors and teammates I met along the way, I wouldn't be um, where I am today. So I'm really big on that and I extend that to my clients as well. Because syempre, when you're like dealing with your finances, sometimes you really need a little bit of holding and a little bit of moral support um and then simplify the man because i understand that finance when you think about it parang minsan nakaka overwhelm or parang it's too serious it's you know when you go to a bank sometimes oh, di mo na iniintindihan yung sinasabi sa ibang tao mm -hmm. nakausap mo so as much as possible when i deal with my clients or explain concepts um simple lang yung talagang maiintindihan mo so that you can actually take action and then empower because you know especially young people nowadays parang um parang we have bigger dreams now we all want to do all these all these things and parang there's so much pressure i feel especially for the younger ones so i just want to be that extra support 
them to like push you to empower you to make choices financial choices for yourself um what age would you recommend na talagang we start saving oh my god is there like an age <laughs> As early as possible, as in, kung may malay ka na, <laughs> once you start um, receiving okay. your allowance, ganyan, as a kid, kung naturuan ka na ng parents mo, that's great. Because there are some people that bata pa lang, their parents already taught them. And right now, yung mga batang yon na nag-save since when they were kids, they're, they're so far ahead from their peers, I, I assure you. I have clients na ganun eh, bata pa lang nagsisave, ang dami na nalang pera. Yung mga iba naman, kakastart lang ngayon, marami pang ahabulan. So I think, going back to your question, um, it's really time eh. Mm-hmm. The time that you have is your most important asset. So the earlier you start, the the easier it is for you in the long run, especially when you're an adult already and you want to start investing and doing this and that. At least meron ka ng ammo. Parang war, may ammo ka na. Rather than when you're an adult na, doon ka pala nag-uumpisa, eh, ang dami mo ng responsibilities at that time. So, um, napapabagal yung progress. So, that's why, start as early as you can because um, you'll have more time. Sorry, my fly. And, um, and if you make mistakes along the way, then it's okay. Because it's like, bata ka pa naman, but at least you're, you're um, making progress. Yeah. Is, is uh, there like a tip that you can recommend for that? Especially for us women, we always, I don't know, we just want to splurge sometimes. So do you have a tip that we could, that, that we could use or like a reminder? Um, the tip that I always say for this type of question is ilagay mo na sa budget mo yung pang spend mo for whatever you want. So kunwari, every month you have your salary or your income. Kunwari, 20% of your income, kunwari lang ah, it really depends per person. Pero you have a budget. Like, kunwari, 20% goes to all your mga luho and shopping, ganyan. So once you once you reach that 20% na for the month, Doon mo na maririmind sarili mo na, oh, stop, stop na Erika next month na again. So, something like that. So, as long as you factor it in your budget, at least you mm-hmm. don't feel guilty spending for your wants. Um, but mm-hmm. at the same time, there's a sort of discipline. You have a metric na, okay, if I reach more than this amount, it means I'm over budget na for that this month. So, yun. Mm-hmm. You could try that. You give yourself a budget. Na, kunwari, okay, 2,000 pesos a month. Pang Shopee or Lazada ko lang or whatever. Um, anything beyond that next month na ulit. Yeah. So you could try that. Why should we, or let's say there are people talaga thinking na, okay, I want to invest in stocks or I want to invest in real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, would you recommend that? Is that highly recommendable talaga to invest? Yes, of course. Everyone should invest because um, Ang bagal if talagang ano lang, straight from your salary and then save, save, save ka. Ang bagal, like parang wala nang end niyan. Parang ang ending niyan, matandang matanda ka na before you reach your goal. So you have to find ways to make your money work for you. And that's by investing. But be careful lang for those that who are who want to invest. Um, before you invest, marami pang steps and marami ka pang kailangan ma-fulfill um, within your personal finance finances that um, you have to have first before you start investing. Because investing has a lot of risks as well. So you have to make sure that your foundations um, are secured first before you get into investing. Okay. So you've so heard that where... question from clients. So what yeah. would you recommend? Um, before I recommend anything, before you invest, make sure first that you have an emergency fund, you have savings in your bank account. Make sure that wala kang utang, wala kang credit card debt, wala kang loans, na bad loans, ganyan. Madami, may steps to. And then, kailangan uh, may insurance ka na, even as a single person, life insurance, health insurance, um, and... Um, nagbibigay ka rin sa SSS, PhilHealth, pag-ibig, yan. Okay. Once all check na yan, okay, mm-hmm. pwede ka na mag-explore on where to invest or how to invest. So, investing, um, it really varies per person kasi iba-ibang appetite tayo, iba-ibang ugali. But right now, in the Philippines, what I'm seeing na, um, yung mga usual first investments sa mga tao, yung mga nakukuha nyo sa bank nyo, mga mutual funds or unit investment trust funds. So, yun yung mga parang um, 
Oo. And yung iba, nag-open ng mga online account, nag-double into like mga investing in mga stocks, mga ganyan. So, um, it really takes a lot of research also. Like right now, I can't re- I can recommend one single thing to you because it really depends per per person and per client. So, kailangan alamin muna natin yung mga um, mga risk mo attitude mo ganyan but for the most part yung Filipino like real estate mutual funds um meron din maganda sa pag-ibig yung pag-ibig MP2 maganda din yon yung mga iba nagii-invest sa mga co-op ganyan marami talaga eh. but um it's really ano once you dip your toes in mar- once you start researching and daming mga lumalabas um i always tell my clients do your research din talaga Uh, make sure that kung ano man yung pasukan mo, kahit yung friend mo lang yung nag-offer, like, oy, may friend ako nag-offer sa akin ng ganyan, do your research, kahit trust mo yung tao. Um, madali lang naman mag-research. Kung hindi yan regularized na investment or something, or hindi siya legal, huwag ka nang pumasok, mga ganyan. Basta make sure it's legal and may mga kilala ka na pwedeng pagtanungan about it. Now, I've invested in real estate. Um, every month, I put into several mutual funds. I also buy blue chip stocks every month. Um, mm-hmm. I actively trade the forex market as well. But that's not really an investment, that's more of active trading. And I've invested also in a business apart from simply My first investment was in 2015, I got a ano, VUL insurance. So, VUL insurance is uh, insurance that's linked to mutual funds. Ganyan. So, um, yun yung very first ko. And I also really wanted insurance for myself kasi um, I don't have a safety net. If I get sick tomorrow or I die tomorrow, I also have to pay for it. So, um, I made sure also that I was insured first. And then after I got four VUL insurances after, um, Yon, I, I doubled na into other investments. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, I even got into bad ones, yung mga hindi legal, ganyan. So I'm telling you, make sure that legal. Legal yung mga pinapasukan, ganyan. Um, yeah. Marami rin kasi yung mga um, get-rich-quick scheme, ganyan. Very curious kasi ako, very open ako sa mga kung ano-ano. Um, and make, kaya that's why I keep saying, make sure that um, maayos yung pinapasukan. Yung very <laughs> important to have those. Um, it's very important to have those. So at least you have a safety net na parang if you get cancer tomorrow or you get sick tomorrow, at least may sasalo sa'yo. Kasi most of the time, what happens is if something bad happens to you, um, whether sickness or sudden death in the family or something, ang, ang laki ng gagastos dyan most of the time. So ang una niyang kukunin are your savings. Um, kakainin niya rin yung kung may investments na kayo, inuna niyo yung investments before that. Kakainin niya rin yung investments niyo. Now, kung naubos na yung savings, naubos na yung investments, ito na yung hiram na sa relatives. Tips or sa mga online, di ba? Nakikita natin may mga humingi ng donations. Yeah. So, um, na friends, family, meron mga ganyan, yung mga GoFundMe. So, kaya important that you protect yourself first kasi um, at least when you invest na, meron ka ng taga-save sa'yo, no matter what happens, at least you have a fallback. Um, yun, that's why. That's why unahin muna yun. Okay. Um, so nice. I guess for young professionals, Um, set very clear goals for yourself. Kung ano ba yung gusto nyo mangyari within your financial life for the next year. Um, ngayon, magde-December na, it's a good time to sit down with yourself and, you know, write down your goals also for the next five years, for the next ten years. Be very clear with how you want your life to be like. Career, family, love life, lahat. Very clear. So, kasama dyan yung finances. So, once you're clear now with your financial goals, dun mo na makikita um, what things you have to do. Dun mo na makikita what, how you should plan around things like that. So, yon. So, once nakita mo na yung goals mo, once na alam mo na yung mga steps, um, gawin mo na, honestly, just do it. Um, and it. And it's really, it's not, It's never a one-time thing talaga. It's a constant journey. And every year as we age, nag-iiba yung priorities, nag-iiba yung goals. So, kailangan talaga you constantly assess yourself. And as for saving and budgeting, um, same lang with the one kanina na student na parang um, set a budget for yourself. Kunwari, ang kaya mo lang i-save monthly kasi madami kang binabayaran dahil yung professional ka na 
10 to 20% of your salary, then do that. Monthly, kailangan unahin mo siya. Before any other expense, set aside for your savings first. Um, and if you're, you're invested already, set aside for your investments monthly. And then pag na-set aside mo na, that's when you start spending for all the other things you need to spend for. Pero unahin mo na muna yun. Every month, dapat, dapat it's automatic. Like, okay, salary, transfer to my savings. Ganyan. Ganun dapat talaga. As in, para siyang diet eh. Discipline talaga. Like kanina may nag-comment, it's discipline eh. Um, yeah. yun. Okay. What is uh, for yourself one, that, um, you have taken with you throughout these years when it comes to talagang handling your finances and that you will that you know you will also take this throughout your life do you have like that one parang wow yeah tip or <laughs> mm. um for me or kind of a reminder to yourself uh reminder to myself Ba? Ang dami. Um, to, you are more than one if you add sign. To prioritize myself talaga and my future. Na parang um, every decision I make, like today, if tama rin ako to work or kung hindi ako magtabi to invest, kung nagtamad ako mag-transfer ng something, I know that it will greatly affect my like next year next five years next 10 years so um by prioritizing myself it means that i'm also prioritizing the things i have to do to get to like my ideal future self i don't know if that makes sense so you know when there are days na i'm lazy or when there are days na i just want to splurge you know i have those days pa din. parang it, i always like parang bring myself back to reality na wait you know if if you do that or kung tamarin ka today then you're gonna be like one step behind na naman you know what you want to achieve so yun parang always reminding myself that um I'm mean, getting my point across parang yeah just prioritize yourself and your goals kasi no one else would eh. um even if you have family and loved ones supporting you at the end of the day you're still the one making the decisions for yourself so prioritize mo yung future ideal self mo i don't want us to be in our retirement years age na na parang maraming regrets ayoko parang ayoko maging 60 year old woman na ang daming regrets about her life her dreams so yun yun talaga yung pinaglalaban ko na ayoko nang ayoko matalo sa life yun yeah. and Last is, take things step by step. Kahit small, kahit mag-save ka lang ng 100 pesos a month, kung yun lang yung kaya mo, that's better than nothing, you know. Small steps create um, bigger results. Like, small steps done consistently create bigger results than nothing at all. Yeah, just create. follow us on Instagram. It's at Simply Finance PH. And everything's there. There are links to our website. If you want to book a free discovery call with me, you can book it there also. So, at Simply Finance PH. Yun lang. Thank you. This is the magic of film. It brought people together. Whether you go into med school, whether you go into engineering or whatever course, because we know to save the world, you need to appreciate yourself first. These short films, they don't feel short at all because they made such a big impact. And this is not just an avenue to recognize your films, because we're giving you much more opportunities than these. It was like a main, ano lang, the main gist of Kogbier course. So basically, yung Cubiertos is all about social media manipulation on adolescents. Uh, ayon, uh, since naisip namin, uh, yung Cubiertos kasi is, since social media, nandito na tayo sa loob ng social media. Eh, and hindi mm-hmm. na natin alam kung ano yung nangyayari sa loob. Kasi since we're too hung up and we're too addicted on it, na hindi na natin alam na may problem na pala. And with uh, kids these days, uh, ayon, they engage into some uh, social media accounts, social media applications mm-hmm. without the guidance of uh, their parents. And hindi mm-hmm. natin alam na nagiging negative na siya, nag- nagiging negative yung impact niya sa mga bata. So, uh, ayon, uh, it has a high risk of 
masira yung behavior nila in a way na uh, pwedeng magdulo to sa maging long long term result sa kanilang uh, future as an adult so ayon yun yung parang just nung film namin how was it talaga like working on the film did na enjoy mo ba um, <laughs> so um grab yung experience ko when it comes to this production kasi ito talaga yung all in kong first all in kong production sa UST in a way na maka mga naka work ko is ang um, courses nila for the future is more uh, uh, fine arts, advertising, and ako, film lang. So, parang getting to work with those kinds of people and yung mga uh, ideas na nabibigay nila is parang ang gandang ipagsama as a film ano, maker din. So, ayun. Here to us uh, on YouTube. Uh, nandun na rin yung trailer. Just search up ano, here to us official uh, selection. Yeah, that's it. Okay. All right. So, ano yung story uh, behind Maxima? Maxima is a film about a teenager armed with grand and lofty dreams of becoming a superstar. But then, she finds herself in a struggle of fulfilling her childhood ambitions. And as she works with her mother for a famous actress, she can't help but fantasize over the feeling of what is it like to be, one, a superstar. And mm-hmm. knowing their condition, she's slapped with the reality that her dreams come with a heavy price. So in short, Maxima is a story for dreamers, for the hopefuls. I see. And why did you come up? How did you come up with the title pala? Bakit Maxima? Um, actually, uh, Maxima is a character from one of my, from our main writer's ah. projects, a bang subject. So, Parang nung nag-brainstorm po kami kung ano po yung gagawin namin for the film. Parang sabi namin, pati na lang natin ituloy yung character ni Maxima sa film natin. So, from, ayun po, from another project siya. Okay. And how long did it take for the team to come up with the the short film? Uh, kasi po, ano, um... Ka-schoolmate ko po si Monica, tapos pareho, kabatch ko po siya nung, ano, nung itong film fest na to. Tapos requirement po namin siya sa isang subject. So, mm. hindi ko po exactly matandaan kung gano'ng katagal, pero siguro mga um, two months. So, what's ko, the story naman of Facebook? Um, yung inspiration po namin was uh, around during pre-production po kasi, uh, widespread yung news about uh, war on drugs, extrajudicial killings, and uh, I'm sure we all know naman yung issues non, which was presented a lot sa uh, news platform. So, yung goal namin was to create something fresh and unique, pero at the same time, it was still relevant to what was happening sa society natin. So, naisipan po namin na why not uh, incorporate yung child trafficking, which is one of the uh, widespread issues rin po sa bansa natin to into a topic which is relevant at during that time which was uh, the drug issues, the drug war. So, kaya yun po yung basic premise po nung film namin which is about a child na unknowingly na drug po siya in a escalating uh, drug war. Uh, kaya, and yun po yung, yung main plot po nung film namin and we are happy naman po sa kinalabasan. Okay, galing. Um, if you don't mind me asking, no, is is ko the name of the main character? That's why yun yung title ng movie nyo? Uh, yes po. Uh, short and long po from Francisco. And actually, ang nagusto lang po talaga namin na parang short yung title, kaya yun po yung naisipan namin. Talaga. For me, given po na, yun po, we are also from uh, UST Senior High School. And I am from... Uh, health allied strand. So, siguro hindi po talaga kami artistic yung ganun po. Yung goal lang po talaga namin during that time was mm-hmm. makagawa ng project para maipasa at makagraduate. And after that, kakalimutan na po. But, you know, like, uh, it was our last uh, projects sa gawin before graduating. So, naisipan namin, why not uh, put our best foot forward? Why not do something na siguro naman, no, 
uh, magiging proud kami in the future. So, it was overall a nice experience for us. Kahit na wala kaming background sa filmmaking or creative mm-hmm. stuff. And it is, of course, a memory that we still treasure up until this time. Pero si Chai, sir, best po na makalimutan yung song all throughout the film. And ayun, actually, po madami nagsasabi na it doesn't make sense <laughs> so also, um, in the duration of the uh, first four minutes ng film kasi like, um, we just hear loud music po uh, uh, all throughout the first four minutes of the film. Mm-hmm. And everything will eventually just make sense at the end. We're in um, trigger warning to everyone. Um, we tackled a, a very sensitive topic which is incest rape in the country. So ayun po, medyo... Uh, sensitive po yung naging uh, atake po namin dito sa last sa LSS or the last song syndrome. How did you connect the last song syndrome with the with your main topic of the movie? Uh, um, um, the movie po actually the idea started when I was uh, when I read po one of the articles from Rappler. It is entitled "Rape Within the Family: Um, the Philippines Silent Incest Rape." Uh, something like that po. And um, it basically says na here in our country, we tend to shun on these kinds of cases such as um, incest rape because we are family, we are very family-centric or family-oriented na to the point na in order to protect our family or the dignity and the name of our family, is set aside po natin yung mga ganito kasensitibong issue sa ating pamilya. And ayun, parang doon ko po naisip from that, since I was the one who wrote for the LSS, uh, don't ko po na isip na people are people actually stay silent in this kinds of uh, in towards this issue. So why not make it very loud in the uh, in the film? So kaya po yung all throughout the film super lakas po nung palakas po nung palakas yung song na narinig niya, narinig niya. And spoiler alert everyone, actually po kasi and trigger warning na din, uh, yung song po kasi na yun yung ginagamit nung uh, supposed tito nung uh, main character namin para hindi po sila marinig na ayun nga po na may ginagawa siya dun sa kanyang uh, pamangkin. So, ayun, ganun po siya naging ka-sensitive. So, trigger warning to everyone. What I said po nung sa acceptance speech ko during the Best Advocacy film, uh, I hope everyone who is watching right now I hope na mag, ma LSS po tayo sa mga tu, sigaw na tu, na na mga humihingi ng tulong sa atin para tayo po mismo ang gumawa ng paraan para matulungan po natin sila kasi if we tend to shun or to stay quiet or to just ignore these kinds of cases especially about gender based violence and sexual abuse magpapatuloy at magpapatuloy lang po ito sa ating bansa. It was Actually po, kasi nag-start po talaga yung production. We were just five people po in the production. Ganun po siya kaalikit. And super parang, at sa umpisa po, trip-trip lang po talaga namin magkakaibigan na mag-shoot. Ganyan. Kasi since then po, I was really into filmmaking, film, ganyan. And my friends were very supportive about that. Kaya once na pag sinabi ko po na ano, may script po kung bago, ganyan, we tend na mag-shoot together. And we shot everything in an, in one day. So super heavy and super time constricted po kami all throughout but it was very fun kasi at the same time knowing that we were able to create something that will echo out yung mga para makatulong pa and to raise more awareness about these kinds of issues especially with your friends na mga kababata ko po since uh, since mga bata pa kami magkakaibigan na kami it's a very fulfilling um, opportunity and it also pushes us more para po pag-aralan and to study more about our society or in the Philippines in general. Wow, galing! Thank you so much, Francis. We're behind you. So, your story po is about a mother who lost her son and her struggles for going through that loss and how it was told by the media. So, it's actually about uh, manipulation of the truth sa media and the issue of extrajudicial killing in our country so oh. ayun, it was it was actually inspired by what happened to Pian de los santos three years ago oh. uh, a victim of the extrajudicial killing and yung sa uh, war on drugs and ayun po gusto lang po namin ma ma voice out ma speak out yung harsh social reality na uh na, na kinabibilangan natin ngayon na kung saan yung world na uh, kasan tayo na mabuhay. And yung rampant, uh, rampant violence and injustice na meron na kahit ilang taon na yung nakalipas, uh, 
evident and prevalent pa rin sa mundo. So, yun yung gusto po namin uh, ipakita sa film. And ayun po ang malapit na namin. Wow! Another heavy topic. Ah, yes po. Uh, ito po kasi yung uh, film na to, mga ilang buwan po din namin uh, pinag-isipan, pinag-planuhan, and shinood. And sobrang thankful nga din po ako sa production, yung Gas Art Zone production. And dahil po sa super heavy niya, meron pong isang part sa production namin na habang sinushoot yung monolog ng, ng mom, sobrang damang-dama po namin yung, yung sakit and yung hirap nung nangyari. And ayun po. <laughs> I bet, ano, I bet all of you had those moments. So, parang, oh. I'm using this opportunity again to call for everyone to do our part and to help others, especially those who are struggling, especially right now that we are still um, in our houses, we are still locked down in our houses, na mas tumataas po ang bilang ng mga uh, nagsasuffer ng domestic violence in their houses. So we could, just by sharing awareness or just by um, using our platform or chatting our friends by checking on them, it is a great help. It poses a great help already. So sana gawin po natin yung part natin so that we can help everyone who is suffering right now. And again, lagi po na sinasabi, kumailasas po tayo sa mga sigaw ng mga humihingi ng tulong so that we ourselves are going to make our own solution to this kinds of abuses or problems. And thank you po pala sa STS Street School and to making a, making a difference for um, having us. Thank you po. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.